Global War 36 enthusiast here with Operation No Time to Die, turn 4.4, the Commonwealth. It is January 1938. <clears throat> Before I start my turn, a tiny correction to Boston Bruce's 4.3 Japan turn. He had two transports and one destroyer pick up two Marines, two artillery, and a cavalry. Uh, this is a problem. The most a transport can carry is one infantry class unit and one other land or air unit. The most a Japanese destroyer can carry is an infantry class unit. But this move involves two artillery class units and a vehicle class unit. So Boston Bruce decided he would just leave his cavalry uh, back in Kyushu. Uh, so I'm just going to move that cavalry from uh, Kwai Tung back to Kyushu. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with two tech rolls. Uh, one for advanced anti-submarine warfare and one for wartime economy. Submitting to PBA, PBE games. And my first roll is a 10. <clears throat> so I did succeed with advanced ASW. But my second roll for wartime economy was a 6. I think I've missed with a 6 twice. But anyway, anytime I get a success with Britain, I'm happy. Interesting thing about the current tech chart that you might not see in, uh, basically, probably aren't going to see in other YouTube games ever, is that France has stage two wartime economy and America uh, doesn't have wartime economy at all. All six uh, of the countries rolling for tech have wartime economy, at least stage one, ex and the only one that doesn't is America. That's a very unusual start to this game. <clears throat> um, there's one other uh, secret tech rule that the British have been working on. Uh, they would need a, a Nat 20. Let's see what it is. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They did get it. It's a, it's a Nat 20 and that is a development for uh, a special soft science, a, a social science called subliminal warfare. The British have developed subliminal warfare uh, and what it is is if they if you they've learned that if you insert just a few films a few frames in a film uh like if you put popcorn just a couple frames of popcorn in a film you can influence people and they're going to try to use this subliminal uh advertising on the japanese they're gonna they're gonna start doing it. it's gonna be very interesting so Keep your eye out for frames that might just flash by. Let's let's see what happens. Okay, British purchases. I'm going to upgrade a militia into an infantry for Great Britain. I'm going to purchase one infantry for three, so that's up to five, and then a tactical bomber for 11. That's 16, that's all I had. I don't save any. The FEC uh, has eight IPP. They will upgrade one militia for two and buy three more militia for six, so that's a total of eight. They won't save any. The ANZAC have seven IPP. They're going to purchase two infantry for six and save one. Okay, so combat movement with Great Britain, none. Um, Non-combat movement. Okay, so I'm going to have one transport. Let's rotate this around here. Um, let's see if we can get that down here. This one transport in C zone 122 is just going to move over 1, 2, over to 85. I, I noticed that the Germans, there's something that they're that they're doing. I don't know if it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark with these submarines. Maybe they're, maybe they're looking for the Lost Ark or something, but I, I'm really keenly interested in what's going on in C zone 85. Um, maybe, maybe the Germans are up to something there. Okay, one naval transport is going to, let's see if I can get that. Can I get that in the frame? I, I guess I can't really. Sorry, I don't know if I can go back far enough. Oh, well, I have to, I have to zoom out, of course. Okay, let's see. So one naval transport here in C Zone 83 is gonna move over one to join C Zone 85, carrying these two infantry from British Somaliland over to Southern India. Okay, now let's do the big move. Uh, let's see if I can get my naval uh, task force here. Just to review, I've got um, a carrier, 
a light carrier with a fighter, a light carrier with attack. I've got two battleships. I've got a battle cruiser, three heavy cruisers. Uh, I have two British light cruisers, one Anzac light cruiser, five British destroyers, one Anzac destroyer, two submarines, and one torpedo boat destroyer. All these forces are going to move from Sea Zone 83 over here to Sea Zone 85. And we're going to search around for uh, what the German subs are up to. <clears throat> okay, um, one Anzac transport is going to pick up uh, the two infantry that are in British Midlands and move to Sea Zone 24. So let's get these guys. Oh, I'm sorry, from Sea Zone 24 down to Sea Zone 79 and drop off those two infantry in Gibraltar. So now Gibraltar has four infantry and three militia. Sorry about that, Portugal. Okay. Um, one naval transport here that started in 79 is going to move up there to Sea Zone 24. Strategic rail movement. I'm going to have one infantry in Haryuna. Uh, we'll strategic rail down to Calcutta. So I've got two militia and three infantry there. Um, and strategic naval movement. That will involve over here, Australia. Um, this transport will pick up one infantry and one artillery and go one, two, three, four, five to 85, join the armada and drop off an infantry, an Anzac infantry, and Anzac artillery in southern India. <clears throat> um, and that, it, I believe, is the end of my non-combat movement. So, placement of British units. Uh, I'm going to have the militia in western Egypt. Let's see if we can get that in the frame here. Yep, there he is at the very bottom. Uh, this guy will get converted into an infantry. That's my militia upgrade. And then I've got an infantry to place. That infantry is going to be placed up in London. And then uh, I've got a tactical bomber, which is also going to be placed in London. All right, and uh, I've got my FEC. I had one militia upgrade with the FEC, and that is going to be in southern India. So southern India has three uh, British infantry, uh, an Anzac infantry, and an Anzac artillery. And then I've got three more militia to place. One of the militia is going to go into Burma, and then one of the militia is going to go into Hong Kong. So I've got three militia in Hong Kong. Not that this force would be able to stand up to the Japanese if they decide to go in. I mean, he has just huge force. And then one in British Malaya. So both Hong Kong and British Malaya have three militia and two infantry in each of them. Okay, and then Anzac gets to place two infantry and we'll place both of those in Sydney. So Sydney has four uh, militia and three infantry. Alrighty, and then we will do uh, collection, collect income. So Great Britain collects 16 IPP, and uh, they didn't save any, so that's what they have. FEC collects 7 IPP, they didn't save any, so that's what they have. And then ANZAC collects 5 IPP, but they had saved 1, so next turn they will have 6 IPP. Now we will start France's turn. So for purchases with France, they have 10 uh, IPP, and they will spend it on lend leasing a fighter to Abyssinia. Let's talk about Abyssinia for just a moment here. Um, can I get that in? Yeah, I think I've just barely got it in at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, is there a way I can crank it back? 
Am I zoomed out as far as I am? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I My particular state. Oh, maybe I can bend this. Okay, I think you can see these forces down here. In Abyssinia, I have four infantry, two militia, a cavalry, and a fighter. Uh, Italy has emptied Eritrea. And if I moved a unit into Eritrea, then I would win the Abyssinian Civil War. But it's not worth any IPP, and Italian Somaliland is worth one IPP. Now, the Italians have picked up two infantry in their task force, and they could uh, carry the infantry and drop them off in Italian Somaliland next turn. I'll have two fighters, four infantry, and a cavalry. He'll have three uh, infantry, a cavalry, and a fighter. Uh, post in your comments below, do you think I should just take Eritrea and end the Civil War, or do you think I should attack the Italians in Italian Somaliland? Um, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll be particularly interested in what Bill Calloway says, because you gotta, you gotta do what Bill says and then blame him for it. All right, so tech rolls. I, I, what I'm gonna do is roll for wartime. Oh no, I'm not gonna roll for wartime economy. Sorry, I'm, I'm at stage two. I'm gonna roll for advanced mechanized with the French. Uh, and then I'll do a recruitment roll for Abyssinia. I'm not going to do any combat movement, so it'll just be at one. And I'll do those uh, generations of the PBE rolls at the end of the turn. Okay, non-combat movement. I'm going to move the French fleet here, uh, consisting of a heavy cruiser, a destroyer, four subs, and a torpedo boat destroyer. I'm gonna move them from sea zone 83 Guess what? Over to C-Zone 85. And then I'm going to have two infantry move from Alsace-Lorraine back into Paris. And I'm going to have these two, uh, one infantry and one uh, foreign legion, move from southern France up into Paris. I'm going to have one motorized infantry move from Paris into Alsace-Lorraine. So Alsace-Lorraine only has five or four infantry and one motorized infantry, and then everything else is sitting in Paris. Strategic rail movement, none. Strategic naval movement, none. Uh, so now I get my tech rule for uh, France for the advanced mechanized infantry, and I get a recruitment rule at one for Abyssinia. Uh, let's see what PBE sends my way. It's thinking. Okay, so I did succeed with Advanced Mechanized. France is just on fire with the tech. And I wish it was the other way around. I wish Britain was on fire with the tech. And then a five for my recruitment role. So I failed on recruiting in Abyssinia. Uh, the Lend-Lease, this fighter leaves southern France and goes through French Somaliland and arrives in Abyssinia. Um, okay, France collects 10. They didn't save any, so they have 10 for next turn. Uh, this is Global War 36 Enthusiasts, now turning this over to Panzer J and 4.6 Italy.